The UK events industry has been through a tough time. Many businesses have been scaled back or been forced to stop operating, meaning a fight for survival. However, event professionals are also renowned for their creativity and resourcefulness. In this series of videos, I shall be meeting some of them and hearing their stories. Hopefully their experiences will comfort and inspire others. Today we're meeting Stuart Jenkins, Managing Director of Blue Strawberry and Table Talk. These two event catering brands have been established over 25 years and are renowned for their groundbreaking cuisine. They work with a host of talented chefs, including a few famous ones, to create food for small parties right up to large corporate galas. My name is Stuart Jenkins, I'm the Managing Director of Blue Strawberry Group and we have been operating now in London for the last 30 or so years uh, across a number of different brands. Uh, we have Blue Strawberry, which is an event catering brand. We have Table Talk, which is an event planning and project management business. We also have Flourish, uh, which is our B&I business. So we uh, look after all our clients in their offices and workplaces, which is a new, new area to our business. Uh, and we're imminently embarking on a food subscription service and that's delivered to your, to your home address. Can you just tell me about, a little bit about the genesis and how you came to be involved? Both businesses, both Table Talk and Blue Strawberry were founded by two of my co-directors, Molly Ronan and Jojo Brown. And now Molly founded Blue Strawberry. Uh, the name came from a friend of hers in South Africa who's no longer using the brand and uh, she liked the sound of it, picked that up and, and ran with it. And had been operating in London prior to that in different guises with uh, different entities. And a very similar story for Jojo, uh, Jojo Brenner with Table Talk, doing lots of parties uh, for friends and family. Uh, Table Talk started as a catering business and has developed into an exclusive party provider. So we do everything from the initial brief right through to delivery and uh, working with all the various partners within the industry. So uh, very well established and it's not just UK based, we do international work there as well. Our venue listing is over 70. We, um, pre-pandemic, we, we, uh, we were around 70 staff across all of the brands. Uh, which was great. I mean, that's doubled over the last um, two years. Uh, and we were turnover close to 10 million in revenues um, across all our brands. Um, so we'd seen significant growth up to this point. So um, obviously we're devastated with the pandemic, the same as everybody else is. Um, but look to the future with some level of optimism. Uh, but we know it's going to be a long, long path. When did you first realise that Covid would have an impact on your business? At the start of the year really, I think rumblings were coming out of China and uh, I remember the point in our management meeting where we actually sat down and, and had it as, a, as an agenda point to discuss about how we would react. Um, probably like many businesses, we never had um, the, the understanding that it was going to have the impact that it's had. Uh, we underplayed it, we thought it would, might be weeks, possibly months, no more than three months, then we'd be out the other side of it. Um, financial forecasting obviously is a big part of, of any business and um, you know I look back now at my forecasts back in February and you know clearly they're a, a country mile off. So um, it had a massive impact on us and, and one of the hardest things with dealing with the COVID has been the shifting pattern of those future forecasts to the point where you're almost you almost stopped because it was it was changing daily and it was it was almost impossible to to put any figures to what the future might bring what did you do initially what were the measures that you took the covid measures initially were all around safeguarding so what changes and process do we do safeguarding the team clients how do we need to adapt what needs to change so we built those in quite quickly um, the key element then was how significant the impact that COVID was going to have on us as a business mm. and as an industry. Mm. And one of the very nice elements, I think, off, off the back of the growing crisis was the way that the industry actually came together. Uh, I'd probably spoken, um, you know, relatively infrequently with, with our competitors in the market. But uh, as that crisis uh, built momentum, we all came together. And actually, we were conference calls 
talking, you know, not meeting anymore, unfortunately, but there was lots of conversation going on with competitors, venues and so forth about what, how it was going to play out and how people were adapting and also trying to help each other out, you know. When did you have to start taking more, more sort of radical action? The direct action came in came in March, and um, we then really started to go into the detail of of what this could um, move into. And I think this, the first look lockdown, uh, the commercial impact on us as a business, uh, obviously, revenue stopped. You know, it was it was the worst case scenario, and uh, and everybody was just trying to protect their team you know that was the key objective and all of it was yeah we understand the business is stopped how can we as a business now protect our employees our talent our workforce people who had absolutely invested their time and efforts in in the company and the brands um, and how could we protect them and that was definitely the hardest period because there became it came a realization fairly or early on that we weren't going to be able to do it uh, and that's definitely the hardest thing I've ever had to do. So, you know, we had to essentially lose two thirds of our workforce to be able to retain the, the brand in operation. You know, we had to lose a lot of people. A lot of people who've been with us for a long time had really invested their time and efforts in the business. The, the redundancies for me were def definitely the hardest and most stressful thing that I've had to do. Um, you know, obviously you've got director obligations for the good of the business, your corporate responsibility to ensure that the financial workings of the business are in good order. And that does mean that you have to reduce your, your overhead in these circumstances. And that, and that was incredibly difficult, made even more difficult because it was all done online via Zoom or, or, uh, or, or, or virtual meetings, which is a horrible, horrible uh, part <laughs> To, to do it, uh, you know, it's a, it's a horrible vehicle to enable us to, to lose people from the business. You know, in the events industry where everything is physical, everything is like, you know, in person, it's quite a difficult business to like adapt. But I wondered if you could just tell us, you know, what avenues have you pursued? Okay, so our survival strategy <laughs> to get some sort of revenues coming into the business really cast a net quite wide. Uh, and we looked at everything from, you know, the kind of delivery, home delivery options, the cooking school deliveries, the hampers, uh, you know, the kind of uh, home delivery birthday cakes, you know. So one of the key innovations that's been driven by COVID is, is the development of the Flourish app, which allows you then to, to dine to desk. So um, it's along the same lines of, uh, as, a, as a kind of takeaway delivery very COVID secure and it's essentially it's managed by the client themselves. So we work very closely with the clients. We'll do uh, all the team are tested twice a week, for example, so that we had that um, safeguarding right from the get go. And, um, and it allowed the individuals then to reduce the movement around the office, remove the touch points uh, and increase the, uh, the service value to, to the individual workforce who, let's be fair, were, were coming into the office when everybody else was working from home. Uh, the second innovation is the, the home delivery of, of Nutrition Kitchen, which is uh, something, a project we've been working on over the last uh, six months or so, which uh, is coming to fruition now. And that's, uh, you know, perfect time now. We're in the first quarter. Everybody's locked down, thinking about health, fitness, well-being, uh, both physical and mental. And a key aspect of that is diet. Uh, so to have that all worked out for you, um, you know, created by our amazing chefs and then delivered to your home. Uh, it's just a really, really nice product and it's certainly something that we see uh, a growing market for in London and it will really complement actually our Flourish brands and the rest of the business model for the long-term future, not just during lockdown. How have you as a business got on board with technology? I mean, you know, obviously you've, you've recruited experts, but you still have to then communicate your idea and how's that been? Uh, it, it's very difficult for um, somebody like myself who, who is okay with tech, but not particularly tech savvy, to really have a view of what I want the end uh, result to look like. Um, uh, but I've worked with some fantastic partners who've been able to develop that for us. So I know what I want the, uh, the, the, the end user to experience. I, I know the, the level of service we want to provide. And it's just making sure that tech actually makes that more efficient, uh, more user friendly and ultimately a fit for purpose adaptation online for our services uh, to the business. 
Has there been a change in the mix of clientele? You know, you obviously have corporate clients, you have private clients. Has any of that shifted? So our shifting clients has all been uh, really aimed towards the private. Uh, I think corporates, our corporate clients now simply don't want to risk. Uh, the risk factor now with getting groups of people together is, is just a no-no. It'll be really interesting to see how our corporate uh, partners return to the market when the, when the restrictions are lifted. The thing is that in the private market, an event is, generally speaking, uh, an expense. It's something that they want to do, but it's an expense. Whereas in the business market, it's an investment. Usually an event is to raise profile, sell something, tickets for conferences, whatever. There's, do, you, do you think that the commercial drive in the, in the corporate market will, will, will mitigate some of that kind of reticence that we you imagine? I think the buoyancy of the corporate market um, is going to take a hit. You know, the economy has had such a, um, a beasting over the last 12 months. Mm. Undoubtedly, there will be less, less uh, investment to go into the events market. But I also think that the understanding of how vital events are to business has really been reinforced across this. You think so? Um, I think so, there's been some brilliant uh, examples of how hybrid and virtual events have worked, um, and that's been fantastic to see and working well. Um, but undoubtedly, people want to meet face to face. You know, it, you can't replicate it, you can't replace it. Uh, the sooner business um, get back into the swing of things, obviously, the better. What things do you personally think will be all right? This is going to work out or this is going to happen. What, what do you personally feel optimistic about? You know, you need to try and keep things in perspective. And my strategy personally is, is you know, trying to keep things in perspective, you know, and uh, try, try and think of other scenarios that the country's been through and, uh, and try and think, you know what, we can do this. And we're part of the solution. You know, we're not passengers in this. You know, the events industry is... It, it's just, it's just a phenomenal industry to persevere. Um, we have to set the standard, we have to set the pace. Uh, and in, in doing that, we, we take each other with us. And uh, you know, when I'm having a, a dark day, you know, I'll, be, I'll be motivated by some of my colleagues, some of my co-directors and the industry as a whole. And uh, hopefully I do the same when, uh, when I'm feeling a bit more upbeat. Everything has a silver lining. And I just wonder what sort of like, you know, positives you think can come out of the pandemic. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's forced you to think differently. It's forced us as a, as a, as a company to think differently. And uh, I think that's only a benefit for us long term. Um, but I hope there are many, many um, upsides to this because there deserves to be.